What's going on smart people? My name is Andrew and I'm going to give you a tour of the physics department at NMSU. Today I am joined with Andrew Egan, a fellow grad student. He's going to be giving us a bit of a tour of the physics department at NMSU. We're going to start off seeing his office that's called the seismology lab. Then we're going to see other people's labs that's kind of like an opticsy lab. I keep forgetting what it's called specifically. It's the ellipsometry lab and the we do XRD and ellipsometry in there. It's, it's, it's called the experiment room. Let's just call it that. We're going to show you guys the graduate student office and also this lab that we are in right now is going to be safe for the end which is basically a TA lab where all of the undergraduates will do their labs where they'll learn how to conduct experiments so let's go ahead and get started with 200th daily upload right now Andrew and I are going up to the seismology lab he's going to explain to us sort of what he does maybe show us around his lab that he TAs for okay let's so I'm gonna let you go in first there are no lights so this is where I tend to do my business. There's another grad student here. It's just two of us, which is pretty nice. We've got the biggest lab in, at NMSU. You guys have this whole office to yourself? Yep. As Andrew was saying the other day in one of his videos, L-shaped desks are the best. So if we want to look at Roshni's desk, this is uh, another grad student who is studying seismology. The inner core is basically uh, what they say is anisotropic, so waves propagating through the inner core travel at different speeds and she's trying to nail down um, the, the basic, the general difference between those speeds and maybe even figure out a, an explanation for why that happens. My project, we're just using sound waves to image the inside of the earth and the, the mantle. So you're so, hearing what it looks like? Yeah, it's basically, we're doing, I like to say it's like a sonogram for the earth. Basically, we're looking for the <laughs> earth's boy. baby. Now we're going to show you the graduate student office area. We're actually going to stop by one of the experimental labs real quick and get a quick tour. Okay, so in this lab, what we do is we usually work on semiconductors. And we have two parts of this lab. In this part, we have the XRD machine. What we do with this is that we can find the crystal structure of materials and also if we have some semiconductors that have different layers, we can find the, how thin is each layer. How much did this cost? How much is a machine like this running us? I guess it's something around $500,000. We call this lab the electrometry lab because of actually this thing. This machine itself is ellipsometry. And what we can find here is a dielectric function of materials. Actually, in this lab, what we do is to find the optical response and electric response of materials. One of the ways to find the electric response is the optical response, which is the ellipsometry. So what we do is that you just mount your sample here, you have the incident beam and reflected beam goes here to the detector. And that way you can find the dielectric function. And we can find the dielectric function of materials between about like 4 Kelvin to 800 Kelvin. It's kind of so uh, extreme like temperatures. Mm -hmm. But it's very important for us because some of the materials that we use is actually used for satellites. And up there, the temperature is either so low or so high. So we need to know how our material really uh, responds. If there is anything wrong up there, you cannot go there, right? So you, can, you have to do everything here to understand your material. All right, so now we're gonna look into the graduate assistant's office. This is where you would generally start off your journey at NMSU. And as you can see, it's full of many desks uh, of various sizes. Right this looks much different than your office. Yes, <laughs> Are there my, a... my office is, like I said, we're a bit lucky, the two of us, <laughs> so. Are there a lot of grad students that, see, I don't actually go in here because I'm a fake grad student. Yeah, you fakey. I'm a faker baker, <laughs> but, uh, how many grad students are normally in this office, do you know? So, uh, I believe each desk besides that one is filled right now, and maybe the one on the end. Do you have a better answer, Sherrod? No? You, you don't know who's in here? <laughs> okay. On average, about six or seven people in here. That's not too bad, as you guess. Does it get loud in here? I believe. Because that would be kind no. of frustrating. No. 
Some, some days there are discussions. I bet Abishak is just screaming consistently. No. Yeah. I'm a very calm guy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the grad school office. One thing that I noticed about this school is I haven't seen a single whiteboard. It's very frustrating to me as well. I come from a place where the whiteboards were many and plenty and there was... We're doing physics like pilgrims. So the grad school office is cool. I hope to be a part of it one day. <laughs> Andrew's going to show us the lab that he TAs at. So, And he's also going to give us a little bit of an explanation as to what kind of lab it is. So, as you can see, this is quite the setup. Uh, there's only four stations set up because there's not that many students in this lab. This is a this is a lab for physics majors. And what we have going on today is we're looking at diffraction uh, patterns. We're looking at the the pattern that comes up from a double slit. And the cool thing about this lab is actually I was part uh, partly able to design it. Um, and by design it, I stole it from my undergrad institution. We're basically having a, a competition to see who can most accurately measure the uh, wavelength emitted from this red laser here. Besides that, this, this lab's main, main like oomph that you get from it is that if you are the winning team basically throughout the whole lab, throughout the whole class, if you get the most accurate result within your uncertainties, then you get to avoid having to do one of your lab reports, which is cool. That's kind of cool. So they so they use the diffraction pattern to calculate the wavelength of the laser that you're using. Yeah, and the, the thing is, is that we give them the wavelength of the screen laser so that they can they can test their methods. They're basically designing how do you how do you best put the slit, what measurements like what's the length of this this um, from the slit to the screen, mm -hmm. what's the best way to do that, how do you measure your, your slit width or your, uh, your interference width. From that, they, they basically get to see oh, how, how well is our technique working, and then they get to apply it to this red laser. What are the labs are here for undergrad? So this is like kind of an optics -y one. This is, yeah, this, this lab is actually heat, light, and sound. Other than that, we have advanced lab, which I haven't taken, I didn't go here, um, but I, I've heard good things about it. You, basically design experiments such as the one that we're doing here, but the, the focus is actual implementation of your, your experiment and, and understanding where you're going wrong. You know, This lab, generally, the idea is you, you follow instructions and then you basically write a report about it. Today's lab is specifically geared towards preparing for the next advanced lab. Um, so that's why we're having them design their own experiment. One last thing to show you guys that we almost forgot is the tutoring room. We, there's actually a huge blackboard to write on, and this is, I guess, where... Actually, I'll let you explain this since yeah. you're not familiar. Yeah, this is basically where we have tutoring. We have tutoring at a select period during the day, usually 1 to about 7. Um, Thursdays we cut off a little early and we don't have tutoring on Fridays, but we just have this here to, as like a supplement to our undergraduate students' intro. Um, upper level courses, whatever you, you might need help with, you find it here. A lot of the grad students are very capable of helping you solve these problems that you're working on. Is this free for the undergrads? Yep, like absolutely. Taking away free. from my business. Cool, that's the tutoring room. <laughs> and that's gonna wrap up this tour. There's other stuff that the school has to offer. There's like a nuclear physics lab and stuff that we weren't able to see today just due to availability and things like that. But right. I think it's a pretty good picture of, of what the physics department has to offer. Next on the list is getting some whiteboards in here. But thank you, Andrew, for giving me the tour no today. Problem. No problem. Maybe in the future we'll interview a real full-fledged grad student. What do you guys think? See you tomorrow.